Okay, in this video we're going to take a look at how to create easy wireframe renders inside of ZBrush 4. Uh, I've got a finished character on the screen posed with poly paint. The first thing that I want to do is go ahead and clear out all of the poly paint color. So I'm going to fill this object and all of its subtools with a white color. Now I can do that by opening up the subtool menu and then going into each individual subtool and then filling it with white by going to the color menu and choosing fill object. Again, I'll need to make sure in the shelf that either RGB or MRGB is on in order to make that happen. That's going to be a little bit time consuming. So what I'm going to do is automate the process by using a plugin. The first thing I'm going to do is set up my material. I'm going to choose the skin shade material since it's a nice solid white color and make sure my main color is pure white. Now, I don't actually need to set these in the shelf to use the plugin. I'm just going to go to the plugin menu and choose Subtool Master. Then I'll click the Subtool Master button. That'll open up a palette on the left side of the interface. We have a number of different options here that can control and affect our subtools. I'm going to choose the Fill option. And you'll see that we have the ability here to fill with color, material, or color and material, just as we can in the shelf. Now, I'll mention quickly, if you don't have the Subtool Master plugin, you can download that from Pixelogic.com. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and fill with color and material, and I'll click OK. Now I'll go ahead and drop to the lowest subdivision level, so I'll go into my Subtool menu and choose the new All Low button in ZBrush 4. Now, in order to see the wireframes on our object, we'll turn on polyframes. We can do that from the polyframe button on the interface or via the Shift F keyboard shortcut. Now, I'm going to go ahead and switch to the main subtool so we can see the wireframes a little bit better. Now, one of the things that you'll notice is that in addition to the wireframes, we can actually see each of the colored poly groups on our object. This is the problem that most people have with ZBrush's wireframes. So what I'm going to show you in this video is how to remove that coloring inside of ZBrush. To do this, we need to make some adjustments in the Preferences menu. So I'll go to the Preferences, and I'll dock that over to the tray. I'm going to open up the Draw submenu, and right in here, you're going to see a number of different options, all that have PF in front of them, or at least in them. That stands for Polyframe. Now, the first one, PF frame, represents the opacity for the polyframes. It's currently set to 25, which makes our polyframe wires a fairly light gray. I'm going to drag that all the way to 100. You'll notice that they're now a dark black. The color of the polyframes can be set here in the PF color. Now, if we click this, it will inherit the main color that we have in our palette. So I'm going to set that back to black, and then click the button again, and those will go to black wireframes. Now, the color of the actual polygroups is controlled through the PF fill. It's currently set to 50%. If I drag that all the way to zero, we'll see solid white color of our object and no polygroup coloring. Now, the only other option that I'll set in here is the variable FPO. The variable FPO uh, provides different wireframe styles at higher subdivision levels than the first level. And here's what that means. If I go ahead and increase the subdivision level by tapping the D key on my keyboard, I'll go ahead and turn off polyframes and turn them on again. You'll notice that the main polygons in our base level 1 mesh are solid or with darker solid wireframes. And then inside of that, we see a lighter wireframe color. That's controlled by the variable FPO. If we turn that off and then simply click and drag a little to refresh, you'll now notice that everything receives the same intensity or same density of wireframes. That's really more along the lines of what we want and what an employer will be looking for. So we'll leave that that way. We'll go ahead and drop down one subdivision level by hitting Shift D. And then we've got our wireframes. Now you'll notice that we're not seeing them on each individual subtool at this point. That's not a problem. We'll go ahead and render and they'll show up. I'll go to the render menu. And then I'm going to turn off shadows and ambient occlusion. You don't actually have to do this, but it just helps show the wireframes a little bit better. And then I'll go to the BPR, click it, and get a render. Now you can see that we've got a classic wireframe render inside of ZBrush 4. Now, in many cases, you'll want to show the wireframes at your lowest subdivision level, but you might notice that as we go to the lowest subdivision level, we lose some of the detail from our higher res object. So you may want to increase the subdivision level slightly. Notice if we turn off the wireframes by hitting Shift F 
I'll tap D to go up one or two levels and then turn the wireframes on again, we see the wireframes at a much higher density. Now that's not necessarily bad, but if you're wanting to show off your object and its applicability for a game engine, you want to show how low res your base cage object is. So in this case, what I want is to have my low res wireframes over the top of a higher res object. Now we can do that by dropping down to the lowest subdivision level, turning off wireframes and then turning them on again, and then going to our tool geometry menu and adjusting the subdivision slider. And we'll drag that up one or two levels. You'll notice now that we have the low res cage superimposed over a higher res object. Now, the only potential problem you can run into here is wireframes breaking up. This typically happens when your subtools geometry level is above 200,000 polys. In this case, my object's highest resolution level has 9 million polys. Now at this point, even if I go and do a BPR render, the wireframes will still go faint and break up. So I'll drag the slider back down to about level 4 or 5. You'll notice that the wireframes are much more visible and readable at this stage. I'll go ahead and render again and you'll see that we get a very nice representation of our wireframes even over that sculpted object. So there you have it, easy wireframe renders right inside of ZBrush 4. I hope this video has helped. Please see the other videos in this series on how you can use ZBrush 4 to enhance your demo reel.